This is a random 2v2 that I was uh, invited to. We did some testing first and then we wanted to go and play some 2v2 battles. I suck at 2v2 so I welcome the opportunity to practice a bit. Now I am commanding Macedon. My ally here is commanding Arverni. Uh, in 2v2s pikes can work. Uh, it's, they can be used to block off a portion of the battlefield and that's exactly what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to block off and hopefully use superior missile missiles to destroy the enemy. But the Geta have other plans in mind. They go very missile heavily, heavy themselves. So let's just have a look at the armies. I have six levy pikemen up front, double ranks to take as few casualties from missiles as possible. Then I have, this is a weird Macedon army, I have four Agrianian axemen, I have two Thessalians on each flank, so a total of four. I have two mercenary Thracian cavalry, then I have two archers somewhere, let's see, I have an archer here on the flanks and I have an archer here in the center and uh, Arverni brings chosen swords, five of those I believe, uh, two old sworn, a bunch of heavy horse, let's see, total of four heavy horse I think, MLG Freeman and Gallic Hunters. In terms of skirmish though, we are not as heavily, um, not as heavily equipped for the skirmish fight as the Dashans. The Dashans bring, uh, Ogetai brings, let's see, four dash and heavy bows, could be a problem. Uh, two dash and heavy skirmishers on the flanks, each flank here. Here we have four dash and heavy skirmishers backed up by four folksmen. Spears, armored spears, spears, armored spears, four bow horse. So we have a total of eight, uh, a total of seven bow horse against us. Two noble swords here, a noble sword, uh, oh no, no, two noble horsemen, one noble sword here, and a front line consisting of noble swords, mercenary axe, mercenary axe, mercenary axe, and noble swords. So very light on the melee cavalry, which is good for us, because lacking melee cavalry, it's going to be much harder for them to flank us. They c could flank with these heavy uh, noble horsemen, but it's very risky against the missiles that we have, because these units will die quickly to missiles. So right away I see that his bow horse are close to the red line here. So what I want to do is I want to give attack orders with my mercenary Thracians and hopefully just chase away these guys and keep throwing javelins into their backs. Because as disorganized as my mercenary Thracians are now, I'm not going to take I'm not going to take casualties from missiles. And as you can see, these these uh, these guys will miss with quite a few missiles. I am taking some missile fire, but it's all good. I'm able to make it into this unit, charge it. Uh, unfortunately, these guys don't have the melee stats of their Thracian cavalry cousins, but they should have no problems dealing with bow horse in melee anyway. Over here, things are happening very quickly. The dash and, uh, heavy dash and skirmishers are being pushed up. They're getting chased away by MLG Freeman. Nice cavalry charge here in the center. Right into the backs of the dash and heavy skirmishers. Very, very important. Good use of heavy horse there. Now, if this heavy horse gets pulled out before it gets hit, it would be even better. But uh, the heavy horse is going to get hit by foxes, and that's not a good time for it. But more heavy horse charges in coming here against the armored spears. Uh, the bow horse, I'm firing on them with my archers. And just rushing up the pikes, because now we're facing a rush down here. But fortunately for us, since I'm keeping my cavalry over here, we don't get flanked. And look at this massive gap in our lines here. We could just get sm flanked downhill and smashed. But fortunately, we're able to concentrate our forces here against one enemy, while the other one is just basically standing there watching. Sending the pikes down to block the charge of these noble swords. The pikes just go down in time. And... That will buy us some very important time, but the Levy Pikemen are taking so many casualties here. Luckily, Celtic Warriors being used very well by my ally here, sending the Celtic Warriors through the pikes. I'm pushing up the pikes here to stop this massive folks push. All the while firing on the bow horse with my own archer. The archer already 20 kills on these bow horse. So quite nice. The These bow horse trying to flank around, but so far so good, I think. I mean, we have pikes here fighting with... Uh, together with some uh, chosen swords and in these blobs their skirmish isn't going to be that powerful and this is very risky I was waiting for this opportunity now my Agrianian axemen 
can fire straight down into the noble noble horsemen they're being held in place by celtic warriors they got charged by heavy horse and this noble horseman is going to drop so quickly when it's being fired on by agrianian axemen yeah it, that general is going down insanely fast i am causing some friendly fire here but i asked my ally if, if it was okay so he said yeah fine just fire away and we managed to kill the kill the uh get eye general there very important here is going to precursor my guys to death and use a lot of ammunition in the process which is actually intended because yes i'm going to lose my pikes but firing down firing on these pikes means that these guys are not going to be flanking and it also means that they will have far fewer precursors remaining for the late game when we have cavalry so here are the mercenary Thracian cavalry doing a good job already at 100 kills here chasing away the dash and heavy skirmishers the dash and heavy skirmishers should just take and take this fight because they are much better in melee than the mercenary Thracians. noble horsemen got focused on Although we're certainly not winning here, these uh, these pikes are sort of stopping anything from moving through. But now there's not anything left here, because we attack together. Here are the uh, mercenary axe warriors, straight to the pikes. Levy freemen come in to support. Here we have the general. He's fighting uphill, the old son is fighting uphill. But the noble swords are about to get rear charge here by my Thessalians. Good charge here. They turn around, so now they're getting attacked into the rear by an Oathsorn, charged frontally uh, by Thessalians. The Thessalians hardly lose anything and did a lot of damage uh, during that charge. Noble horsemen never going to be able to catch my mercenary Thracians. But this is a good move using the bow horse, charging the bow horse into the archers. Uh, I had some issues here. I gave attack orders, but the bow horse was moving so quickly that my men just kept reforming instead of firing. You can see now they're firing a bit, and I just gave attack orders with my Agranians because they're going to have no problems dealing with the bow horse. So this guy with all his skirmishers is starting to look like a very juicy target. I just need to get past the armored spears because I'm not going to be able to get a good charge through the forest, and the missiles could just wreck me here. But this is what happens to Noble Swords when they get charged by Shock Cav and fight Oathsorn. Oathsorn are going to win that very, very convincingly. Moving away my Thessalians because these dash and heavy bows will have range on them pretty soon. My Mercenary Thracian Cavalry, 128 kills, pretty nice. Getting flanked by Armored Spears, but the Pikes have done their job here. They've held the enemy for some time. I didn't expect to get many kills on Levy Pikes. This is actually quite good. Uh, 100 kills on Pikes. But now we only have this guy to contend with and this this flank is basically lost for them. They're going to have tired units running up the hill. We're going to be able to engage downhill. We have the mercenary axe warriors here. I'm going to send up my Agrianians and they're going to do a lot of damage firing into the backs of these uh, axe warriors. Which should enable the chosen swords to hold out for just a bit longer. Wow, look at the carnage. Now, the Oathsorn move up. Double sandwich. I move my Thessalians in. Charge the general. He uses his precursors, but that was a decent downhill charge there by the Thessalians. And the Arverni Oathsorn chase in, so the these skirmishers are not going to be a problem when I disengage. Double charge there by Thessalian cavalry. The Thessalian cavalry is also disengaging here and going for another charge. So at this point we have them almost completely surrounded. And another charge by the Thessalians into the dash and heavy skirmishers. Into the noble swords. And look at how much damage the noble swords took there from the Thessalians. I absolutely love Thessalians for late game. They can wreck units. Over here Agranians are going to double up as infantry charging them in they have a decent charge bonus and, and using axes in melee means that they can hang with spears especially spears that are wavering and losing decisively so i leave my thessalians in here for a bit too long but i just want to hold this general here break the center with my uh, thessalians here 
And another charge here by the Thessalians. Down, straight down into the Noble Swords. The Noble Swords should be dead pretty soon. And it doesn't really matter that we're losing hard down here. The Pikes are doing weird Pike stuff. Just Pike things. Now the Oathstone, amazingly, is still alive after having chewed his way through the entire enemy army, basically. Attacking the Noble Swords. Getting another charge downhill with the Thessalians. Attacked in the rear, now it's losing. Should die, rout and waver pretty soon. And that's about it. Look at everything I have left here. I have quite a few units left. But I played very conservatively with some of my units. Kept them back in reserve for the late game. I basically I want these I want these swords to have taken as much damage as possible before I start engaging them with skirmishers. Broke due to army losses. This guy over here has had not activated, so he's not going to he's not going to break anytime soon. But that just allows us the time to charge in and get rid of this blob. And look at all of these look at all of these bodies. This is where the main engagement happened. Epic engagement down the line here. So let's have a look at the kills. I was playing with uh, a guy from the SPQR clan, Magnus the Black, I believe his name was. Um, Landshark and the Lego had won. Really good game. It was cool that they brought the two Dashen armies. Uh, four Bohors, fine with that. Four Dashen heavy skirmishers. They did a lot of damage actually. But uh, th these Foxes also did some damage. So overall, this is not a bad. Uh, get a army but going for noble horsemen if if th if this was me i would probably i'll take a look at another uh get a army afterwards and four dash and heavy bows the lack of cavalry support yes melee infantry is very important in rome 2 but without the without good cavalry support you're just going to die like i lost these two cavalry units that was basically all the cavalry i lost didn't lose anything on these units here Levy Pikes held. The Agronians did a fairly good, a decent job. These guys basically didn't fire, but these guys took out a lot of bow horse. For Magnus, of course, his Oath Sword did a good job. His Heavy Horse, very important in stopping those early charges. I expected the Gallic Hunters to get more kills than they did. Uh, Oath Sword, of course, do well, and these these mid-tier Chosen Swords, they do a very good job against, uh, against Gete when they can get favorable engagements. So for the Gete, the Gete are kind of a special barbarian faction because they um, they have elite swords, they have noble swords, but they don't have any real mid-tier swords, they have mid-tier axes. So if I was going to go up against Macedon and Arverni with, uh, with the Gete, I would probably be bringing some... Sure, I'll bring two bow horse, but I will never leave home without spear horse. Now, spear horse are not great by any means. They are heavy, which is good, but they are worse than uh, they are worse than the heavy horse of Arverni. So, in a two v two situation, I probably would skip the folksman. Maybe bring two folksmen to go with the cavalry and support the cavalry fights because these guys, of course, wreck levy freemen and they like wreck cavalry. Some. Dash and heavy bows could be nice, but I'm not too worried about the skirmish from Arverni. Bit worried about the skirmish from uh, from Macedon, so bringing some dash and heavy bows could definitely be a good idea. Now, bringing spears against Arverni and Macedon, uh, not too sure about that. I would really like to have my uh, to have some noble swords. It's it's kind of hard to find the sweet spot with noble swords because noble swords are very expensive and they won't have the support that they enjoy when other factions bring them. So I definitely like having six spear horse and it's also very nice to have some cheap skirmish uh, for example dash and skirmishers or some uh, dash and bowmen for supporting the uh, supporting the main skirmish engagement. Something like this um, is something that I would enjoy using against Macedon or Verne I think and it all comes down to using the spear horse to the max and then send in mercenary axe warriors troll a bit with bow horse so that the spear horse can actually win the engagement 
and just try to snipe important enemy targets with the skirmishers but you can make it you can make it work especially in 2v2s with dash and heavy skirmishers dash and heavy skirmishers very powerful uh, they have 60 armor which is quite insane and their weapon damage is 40 so they have basically have standard spears so they can be used like third line infantry but thanks for the game guys that was a lot of fun and it's always nice to see levy pikes get some kills strength and honor